Have you ever found yourself truth behind a story that just doesn't add up? Well, today we are diving deep into one such story, Gypsy Rose Blanchard's pregnancy. And trust me, the layers of contradictions, manipulations, and hidden motives will leave you with more questions than answers. Gypsy claims she's expecting a child, but the timeline is messy, the paternity is in doubt, and the whole situation feels like a plot twist just doesn't quite land. Is Gypsy telling the whole truth about her pregnancy? Or is there more to the story than she wants us to believe? Let's unpack this together. Gypsy's been very vocal about her pregnancy, sharing details down to the dates. She left Ryan on March 23rd, had a period on April 17th, and says she got together with Ken between April 27th and April 30th. She claims to have conceived on May 4th and got a positive pregnancy test on May 24th. Then... I was late on my period and I'm like well I was already a little late because I had rhinoplasty and so on April 5th they gave me a pregnancy test because they're not going to perform rhinoplasty on someone that is pregnant so they gave me a pregnancy test on April 5th and it came back negative so I was not pregnant when I had rhinoplasty um again another hint of why Ryan is not the father <laughs> um and so you know the timing if, if everything is taken into account the timing is very clear Ken is the father um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so anyway, whenever I found out I was pregnant, I'm like, how? I didn't ovulate. I don't understand. And that's when I went to a confirmation appointment for my pregnancy. And so at, the, at that appointment, I had seen a different doctor. And the doctor that I had seen looked at those test results from the labs before. Gypsy Rose is lying about who her baby daddy is, and I have proof. Gypsy Rose Blanchard made this comment months ago. She said left Ryan March 23rd, had a period on April 17th, made love with Ken and only him April 27th, 28th, 29th, and 30th, conceived on May 4th, and positive test on May 24th. Ken is the father. Now it says Gypsy Rose Blanchard says ex-fiance is moving to Louisiana to be closer to her after reconciling. This was May 2nd, 2024. So somebody's lying. Who is it? Almost too precise. If you ask me, why is she being so exact about these dates? Is she trying to convince us of something? Or perhaps she's trying to convince herself. The sheer level of specificity raises eyebrows, especially when you consider the broader context of Gypsy's history with controlling narratives and shaping her image. Let's dig deeper into Gypsy's tendency to control the narrative with her weekly pregnancy updates. She shares every little detail from baby kicks to how her belly is growing. It's like she's desperate for everyone to believe her version of events. This could be seen as overcompensating, especially given how skeptical many people have become about her story. If her pregnancy story is so solid, why does she feel the need to repeatedly remind people about it? These frequent updates almost feel like she's attempting to drown out all the doubts and create an unbroken stream of information that directs the conversation in her favor. Even more puzzling is the inconsistency between her timeline and Ken's version of events. Ken said he moved to New Orleans to support Gypsy after she found out about the pregnancy, leaving behind a stable job in Dallas that he had held for over two years. But if Gypsy's claims about conceiving on May 4th is accurate, then Ken's timeline doesn't add up. To that moment of uh, like when we realized we were pregnant, like for me, it was like, OK, well, it's time to buckle down now and be, get prepared to or start to prepare to be a father. So at the time I was living in Dallas, I was living in a house. I had a full time job that I had been at for over two years. Um, and I realized that, well, you know, it's time to time to move. You know, I, I need to be in, in Louisiana to be as close to her as possible to get her, to, you know, so we can be together to get through this process. You know, I don't want to just leave her alone mm -hmm. to to handle a first time pregnancy. I left my job. I I had to break my lease and I packed all my stuff and I moved to New Orleans to start a new life here. And um, and I've been happy ever since. I mean, Gypsy told us weekly that Ken was already planning his move by May 2nd, two days before she supposedly conceived. How can someone move across state lines in anticipation of a pregnancy that hadn't even happened yet? Either Ken has more knowledge than she's letting on or there is a significant gap in Gypsy's story. Adding another layer of complexity, Gypsy herself seems overly confident in how the timelines align. Could it be that she's counting on the assumption that no one would scrutinize these dates too closely? The situation feels slippery. 
Like trying to grasp at shifting suns, and it only depends the doubts surrounding her story. The crucial question is, if Gypsy was already pregnant when Ken moved, how does this match with her story of conception on May 4th? Why does she keep offering these details that don't quite align with each other? Is she hoping that the constant stream of information will make us overlook the discrepancies? Let's shift gears and talk about Ken's version of events. According to him, when he found out about the pregnancy, he immediately felt the need to step up. On the surface, it looks like a classic story of a man trying to do the right thing for his partner and their unborn child. He presents himself as someone ready to shoulder the responsibilities that come with the news of an impending baby. <laughs> I, I mean, I was like getting ready for work. It was very shocking. I think my jaw just dropped. I was like, oh my God, like for real. Like, is, have you taken more than one test? Like, are we sure about this? I took two. She took two. So I think that just like this realization just hit me like, holy shit. Like, I'm sorry. I mean, it's weird. Yeah, but, like, okay. but I was like, I can't believe it. Like, that's crazy. I mean, I think that like, I, I would agree with the sentiment that yes, it was very much too soon. But at the same time, like, it's 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 a child. It's a blessing. I mean, like, I, I think I had a, like a whole cocktail of emotions in that moment. And I think I needed a minute to process. I mean, even after the initial shock, I was like, let me call you back in like 10 minutes. I just feel like <laughs> just walk around and like breathe for a minute and realize like, holy hell, this is happening. Yeah, um, no, but like, not like in a negative way. Yeah. But when you start comparing his timeline with gypsies, the contradictions become impossible to ignore. Gypsy's interview with us weekly added another twist. She mentioned that by May 2nd, Ken was already making plans to move closer to her. Yet, she also claims that they conceived on May 4th. If his move was truly motivated by the pregnancy, then the timing just doesn't add up. He was already making arrangements before he would have even known she was expecting. This discrepancy casts a shadow over their entire narrative. Rose Blanchard says ex-fiance is moving to Louisiana to be closer to her after reconciling. This was May 2nd, 2024. So somebody's lying. Who is it? Because how could you conceive May 4th? But your man said he moved because you were pregnant to Louisiana and you said on May 2nd to US Weekly that he was moving. Mm -hmm. And also let's talk about the distance between you and Ken in that interview. Do you really think that's a couple that is doing well? Come on girl, you are fooling yourself. It begs the question, was Ken moving to be closer to Gypsy for reasons other than just the pregnancy? And why is Gypsy pushing the timeline that doesn't quite match with the reality? But there is more to this story. Ryan Anderson's lingering presence. Ryan hasn't stayed quiet throughout this whole ordeal. He's mentioned on multiple occasions that he wanted children with Gypsy, even after their split. Of course, of course, you know, I lived with her for 24 years of my life and she did things in her life. Um, she shoplifted, um, there was fraud, like there was a lot of things, criminal activity that she was doing that I grew up in. I watched her do all these things. Um, so for me, it is a conscious effort to, you know, go back in my mind and realize that is the wrong thing to do. This is the right way to do. Is there a particular profession that you're interested in getting in? Where do you, you want know, to travel? Your social right? media has blown up. I mean, you're kind of the quintessential influencer in the sense that, again, everything, so many things that you try are for the first time. It and is. what, what, what is Gypsy love? What is she into? <laughs> have you, have you thought about like, what do you want to do with your life now that mm -hmm. you're free? Yeah. I mean, I have, I have personal goals and I have, um, you know, career goals. So, um, I am, you know, newly together wed as my, my husband yeah. calls it. Um, so, you know, I'm married and we're starting our life together. So on the side of personal goals. Um, we want to start a family someday. You know, I'm, I'm 32, he's 37. We don't want to wait too long now. Right, right. Um, so, you know, that's on the side of personal goals. But then on the side of professional goals, it's like, okay, I have this huge platform. Let me use it for something good. Mm -hmm. And so I want to get into advocacy work. Um, I need to make connections with people that are a little bit more established because I'm, I'm, I'm just coming out of prison. He seemed to harbor hopes of a future with her which suggests that their relationship's end may not have been as final as Gypsy likes to portray. It's as if Gypsy has strategically kept both men within reach, using the uncertainty surrounding her pregnancy as a tool to keep them guessing. By maintaining this ambiguity, she ensures that Ryan remains entangled in her life, just as much as Ken. Like it. Gypsy, we kind of watched you go back and forth with Ryan on social media. Mm -hmm. At what point were you like, I'm done with this, I've got to stop? I mean, honestly, I have been trying to have a very civil conversation with Ryan about everything because we don't communicate often. And I think that I really just wanted to have that 
no closure, that one conversation that kind of closed everything up. And I, you know, we had that. Unfortunately, I feel like I'm in a, a, a place of uh, higher healing and um, an elevated healing than he is right now. And so I've kept my distance, um, hoping that he could find that happiness and that healing for himself. What I want for him is to find his happiness in whatever form that is. And I encourage that. I have no ill will towards him at all. I wish him the very best. But any communication right now is just not in the best interest of our healing. The lack of definitive paternity tests only adds fuel to the fire. Despite the swelling rumors and accusations, Gypsy hasn't gone out of her way to provide clear answers. It's almost as though she's content with the questions lingering in the air. Does she see the benefit in keeping both men uncertain about their roles? Or is she afraid that a paternity test might confirm truths she would rather keep hidden? Could Gypsy be using this pregnancy to manipulate both Ken and Ryan? Keeping them both in a state of uncertainty? Is Ken truly unaware of the full picture? Or is he playing along with Gypsy's narrative? And why hasn't a paternity test been done yet to settle those doubts once and for all? Could the delay be a strategic choice on Gypsy's part? So to be clear, you haven't been with your ex for a... This is clearly Month, Ken's yeah, March, baby. Um, early, it was, was mid-March um, when I left Ryan. So um, this is absolutely 100% Ken's baby. There was never any question of paternity. How do you think your ex is going to react to this, especially given that you're going through a divorce proceeding still? I'm hoping that he is okay um, emotionally, and I wish him the best emotionally. Um, but right now, I have not even had a moment to stop and think about anybody else except for, am I taking my prenatals in the morning? Am I drinking? enough water like I have so much to focus on making sure that um, I'm healthy for this baby so. you've clicked into maternal mode I have absolutely nesting and everything to understand the situation fully we have to look at Gypsy's history a history steeped in manipulation and pending reality to suit her needs this is the same Gypsy Rose Blanchard who orchestrated a plan to kill her mother and later shifted the narrative in a way that garnered sympathy from the public. In many ways, her current behavior with Ken and Ryan seems to be an evolution of those tactics. It's as if she's playing a game of chess, making strategic moves to keep control of the narrative and the people around her. Take Ken, for instance. In public conversation, he often appears restrained like he's walking on eggshells. His reserved demeanor suggests that he's aware of the tight rope he's walking. Despite the supposed joy of the pregnancy, he hasn't fully committed to Gypsy. He talks about needing time and going through stages before he's ready to propose, which raises the question, what's holding him back? Is he sensing that something about Gypsy's story doesn't add up? Or is he simply bidding his time? Are we married? No. Hi, New Zealand. Hi, Karma. Hi, Courtney. I'm proposing soon. Uh, not yet. I don't. <clears throat> Gypsy, on the other hand, frames herself as the understanding partner who doesn't want to pressure Ken into staying just because of the baby. But her public behavior suggests otherwise. For someone who claims to want Ken to feel free, she sure spends a lot of time emphasizing her pregnancy and the need for support. It feels like she's saying one thing while setting up a completely different reality behind the scenes. It's almost as if she's creating a safety net, ensuring that Ken stays tied to her regardless of his feelings. I'm not the type of person to say, okay, just because we're having a child means you have to marry me. I'm not the type of person to tell you how to live your life. Like, I don't want to be that person to say, you will marry me. You will, you know, I will move in with you. Uh, he has his own life. And if he wants to marry me, he will propose. He will make his own decisions based on what he wants to do. So I don't put my input in. Okay. After all, he relies on her for media exposure and any potentially opportunities from their story. Gypsy's confidence during these interactions speaks volumes. It's as though she knows she has the upper hand and is willing to use it. She holds the cards when it comes to the narrative around their relationship, and she isn't shy about welding them to keep Ken in check. It makes you wonder if Ken is even aware of how much of his life is being subtly controlled by Gypsy's strategic storytelling. Is Gypsy as selfless as she makes herself to be out? Or is she playing a deeper game to keep Ken tethered to her? 
How much of her public persona is calculated attempts to manipulate perceptions? Are her statements about not wanting to trap Ken a reverse psychology tactic to do just that? And how long can this carefully curated image hold up before the truth seeps through? Skepticism about Gypsy's pregnancy extends beyond her circle. It's a hot topic among online communities, with countless viewers raising doubts about her story. People have pointed out inconsistencies in her appearance, especially when it comes to her fluctuating baby bump size. In one video, Gypsy's belly appears noticeably larger than it does in a clip taken weeks later. Even though she should have been further along, such details may seem trivial on the surface, but they've become fonder for speculation about the authenticity of her pregnancy. And then there's her use of TikTok. In one notable 12-second clip, she shows off her baby bump, but the video is completely silent. Instead of speaking, she lets the caption do the talking, stating that she's 24 weeks and 5 days along, with the baby's kicks becoming more noticeable. It's curious, isn't it? Why choose to mute a video that's supposed to share a milestone moment? Is it because she's worried that her tone or voice might give something away? By controlling what's seen and heard, Gypsy seems to be managing the narrative, only letting out the details she's comfortable with while keeping other as aspects of the story under wraps. For many, these carefully created clips feel like a strategic move, an attempt to show proof of her pregnancy without allowing deeper scrutiny. The silence of her video becomes louder than any words could be. Why does Gypsy feel the need to keep providing updates if she's truly confident in her pregnancy story? Could the rumors that her pregnancy might be fabricated hold some truth? And if she has nothing to hide, why avoid taking a simple paternity test that will put all the speculation to rest? If we zoom in on the relationship between Gypsy Rose Blanchard and Ken Acker, it's clear there's a power imbalance in play. One that becomes more evident the deeper we dig. Gypsy frequently takes the lead in their public interactions, shaping the narrative and steering conversations to her liking. When they go live together or appear in interviews, it's usually Gypsy who is doing most of the talking, often speaking for both of them. When she does allow a moment to speak, it's brief and controlled, and she quickly shifts the topic back to her comfort zone and narrative. This behavior raises questions about who's really in control and how comfortable Ken feels speaking freely. This dynamic comes into sharper focus when we consider their backgrounds. Ken doesn't have a steady job or income stream of his own, making him financially dependent on Gypsy's current reality TV opportunities and media appearances. Ken Urker does not have a job, and he does live with Gypsy Rose and her parents. Well, not her mom, because clearly she unalived her, but her stepmom and her dad. He went over there to ride out the hurricane about a month ago, and he's never left. He does still have his apartment, and she did go back to record her audiobook there. That was the only time they had been back since. Other than that, Ken has been living with Gypsy Rose, Christy, and Rod, which makes this dependency creates significant imbalance, one that Gypsy seems to leverage. Ken's move from Dallas to Louisiana to be closer to Gypsy is presented as a gesture of love and commitment. But there is an underlying sense that his future is now tightly intertwined with hers. Without Gypsy, Ken risks losing not his living situation, but also the bonding platform that he's been building through association with her. It's like walking on a tightrope. And Gypsy appears very aware of this precarious position. Her confidence when discussing their relationship, like when she mentions not needing Ken to stick around for the baby, suggests she knows he's unlikely to leave, even if she doesn't openly demand that he stays. This dynamic is further complicated when we look at how Gypsy frames their relationship. She insists she doesn't want to force Ken into any commitment and presents herself as someone who's simply letting things take their natural course. But there's a contradiction here. Despite her claims of not wanting to trap Ken, she often speaks with a certainty that suggests she knows exactly where he stands. Her words paint a picture of a woman who's offering Ken all the freedom in the world, but her actions controlling the narrative and subtly reinforcing his dependency, telling a different story. Gypsy remarks about not wanting Ken to feel obligated to stay just because the baby might sound a noble on the surface. They can also be seen as a strategic move. 
It's a way to appear selfless while keeping him emotionally tethered. By emphasizing that she doesn't need him around, she positions herself as a strong and independent. But at the same time, she knows Ken might feel that staying is the only option. It's like she's dangling his dependency on her like a carrot. Just out of reach. It's like dangling his dependency on her like a carrot. Just out of reach, all while maintaining the facade of generosity. This creates a situation where Ken, despite whatever feelings he might have, is constantly reminded of how much he stands to lose if he walks away. Is Ken's reluctance to fully commit a sign of his true feelings? Or is he simply trapped by circumstances beyond his control? Does Gypsy see Ken as more of a means to an end rather than a true partner? Someone who helps bluster her public image and keeps the narrative of her new life alive? And how much of this relationship and how much of this relationship is about genuine feelings versus strategic moves to maintain control over the story? Could it be that Ken, aware of Gypsy's past manipulations, is playing along for his own reasons? Or is he truly under her influence, unable to find a way out? So, where does this leave us? Gypsy Rose Blanchard's pregnancy story is full of inconsistencies, half-truths and moments that just don't add up. From the conflicting timelines with Ken to her efforts to control the narrative through the social media, it's clear that there's more to the story than she's letting on. The question is, how much of this is intentional? Does Gypsy believe her own version of events, or is she weaving a narrative design to keep everyone guessing? Is Ken a willing participant in this drama, or just another pawn in Gypsy's game? And most importantly, will we ever get the answers we are looking for? Drop your thoughts in the comments below because this story is far from over. Drop your thoughts in the comments below because this story is far from over, and your perspectives might just uncover a side we haven't seen yet. Thanks for sticking with us through this deep dive into the tangled web of Gypsy Rose Blunted's pregnancy story. If you found this analysis thought-provoking, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. We'll be back with more updates, and trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming next.